So uh, I would like to just say um, that uh, we are really happy that we are on the eve of the uh, Global Climate Action Summit, which uh, is in San Francisco, and I think the location of the summit is important for two reasons. Not only uh, the fact that we're here in California, and California uh, being um, an important uh, political force uh, in the fight against uh, climate change, but also San Francisco being uh, in proximity and more and more becoming the center of uh, the Bay Area as the world's most important innovation system, which also shows that the summit uh, puts itself, I think, intentionally uh, next to where some of the most important technologies um, of this planet uh, have been emerging uh, over the last decades. Uh, and that coincides with our mission as Open Austria. We want to look at um, technology in a neutral way. We want to explore the potential, not only for our companies, for our startups, for our uh, public administrations, uh, but also for the many problems uh, that we uh, face as a society uh, and as a planet. Um, clearly, um, many of us, and myself included, not uh, have a full grasp uh, of, of the complica complicated technologies um, that uh, come out uh, of Silicon Valley um, and of the global innovation system. But uh, what we do understand is that uh, climate change is a reality and that uh, we, are, we have so far not been really able to tackle uh, this problem. And so uh, I think it is high time that we look at technology as a possible solution and as a possible remedy to tackle this uh, problem. I would also like to say that uh, we are a small country, but we are part of the European Union. In fact, uh, since a few months we have the presidency of the European Union. Um, and uh, it is where and Europe has a huge presence here uh, also uh, at the summit and is supporting it. And I'm very happy that we're going to hear later on about uh, a, a climate kit, a initiative financed by the European um, Union. I want to thank our uh, um, organizers of this event, um, Global Challenges, an initiative from Austria, uh, and Miro uh, will later uh, talk, Glotscher, uh, as well as the uh, Global um, the, the Climate uh, Chain Coalition. Also, that this event, I want to thank uh, our support and sponsor, the Royal Bank, of Canada, and I would like now uh, to uh, pass on uh, to um, Mr. Masamba Tioye, who is a co-chair of the CCC and uh, works also for the Climate uh, Secretariat in Bonn, the UNF uh, C. Thank you. Definitely, it is needed to address climate change. 
Another one is policy making, and then the third one is technology. We know that the currently available technology, their um, uh, large deployment will not allow to achieve the long term goal of the Paris Agreement. If we want to achieve uh, the long term goal of the Paris Agreement and build the sustainable future we envision, we need to be able to come up with new um, technologies, new technologies that are disruptive, new technologies that can address the scale and the uh, deepness of the challenges that we are facing. So the need to mobilize technology to benefit people and the fact that we want to go down to the level of individual citizens to promote climate action, these are the two main drivers of the interest um, of the University of Secretariat for this innovative technology. So in this presentation, I would like to share very quickly uh, the state of thinking within the UNFCCC Secretariat and what is it that we have started with. So first of all, we uh, as an organization, the first question that we had to respond to was, is it really relevant to what we are doing? It was the very first question. Yeah, this is a new technology. There's a lot of hype around it, but probably also there is a lot of uh, potentiality. We wanted to know whether uh, blockchain can really serve uh, climate action. And we say we need to dig a little bit deep and understand what is it that makes blockchain what it is. What are the core functionalities? of blockchain that differentiate this new technology from the other technology. And we come up here with some characteristics that for us, and I think this is, we, we are welcoming the input from the public because probably there are many blockchain experts uh, among you, it would be good to have your perspective. So we try to identify really the, the core attribute. And, and because we, we realize that there was a big confusion between the core attribute and some kind of secondary functionality that are derived from this core attribute. To be able to understand the full potential of blockchain, it was important for us to have more clarity on that aspect. So we identified some examples of uh, core attribute, and then we see what I call the secondary functionality that are enabled by the core uh, uh, attribute. And finally, in front of that, some specific type of issue that we are trying to address when we are dealing with climate action. So the, the, the idea here was to build a kind of relation between the functionality of blockchain and the type of issue that we are uh, facing when we are conducting uh, climate action. For example, here you can see on the attribute distributed, decentralized, central administrative fee, uh, and only mutable, cryptographically see consensus based, audience control, and so on. So. And then, secondary uh, functionality, resistance to failure, immutability, and resistance to uh, and here in front, some type of problem like uh, double counting, uh, issue of transparency that we are facing in the uh, in the in climate action. And then uh, the next question with this, what we intend to do is to build a tool that will allow us, if we have uh, a specific issue we want to address to be able to put it in that format, what, is, what are the core problems that we are trying to address, and then identify the functionality of blockchain that we need. And then the next question was uh, also to have a little bit more clarity about what is blockchain, what is DLT, what is not DLT, 
And, and here again, we come up with some um, interesting uh, reflection. I, I would like to have your, your feedback on it. Maybe I will, <coughs> I will jump straight to the conclusion. If you look at all the articles that are produced around DAT and blockchain, it seems that what people call DAT or blockchain change a lot from um, one um, expert to another. Mm. And we were wondering at the end whether what people call blockchain and DAT is not a kind of mindset. The mindset is just an approach that allows to redo what, uh, what is his name, Nagamoto? Yeah, try to redo what actually he did. Because if you look at closely what he did, he did not come up with a new technology. All the technologies that, was, that are used were available. The only thing he did is to integrate in a very wise manner, existing technology and apply them to a specific problem that he wanted to address. So to what extent many of these things that are called DMT are not just uh, integration of several digital technologies to address a specific purpose. So, and, and, and also we come up uh, to the question of differentiation between DLT and DLT ecosystem. But whenever we are talking about DLT, uh, blockchain, we will talk about smart contracts, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and other types of technology that need to be integrated with DLT to uh, mobilize its full uh, potential. So we uh, when came to the conclusion that, in fact, what we are calling DLT is more a kind of uh, ecosystem of uh, digital technology that includes uh, DLT. Now, with a better understanding of what is it that we are calling DLT and uh, um, what is it that we can do with this um, innovative technology, we um, decided to run four main projects. Yeah, I have three, I will also present recently the, the first one. As I mentioned earlier, the first project is to develop a decision tree under which condition uh, this innovative technology or their combination is, is useful. And uh, if they are useful, what is the most relevant type of combination that will address the issues that we want to address. And here we want to have an automated tool with um, um, a, a standardized approach of uh, uploading some key issues and then expecting the, you know, the, the tool to deliver the result. So, as I have mentioned previously, one of the most important applications that is of interest for us is to be able to measure the contribution to the long-term goal of the Paris Agreement of individual citizen. Because if you want to incentivize, you need to measure. And so far, there is no framework that allows to do such a type of measurement. One could measure the contribution of an organization, but going down to the level of individual citizen is a big challenge. We think that this new disruptive technology can help address that type of challenge. So the first project that we want to run is a link to an already existing project that is named Greening the Blue. Greening the Blue is a UN project where all the UN organizations committed themselves to reduce their scope one and two emission and even to go towards climate neutrality for their own emission. 
Now, as I mentioned, the challenge of uh, uh, climate change is uh, so big that we need to come up with also very strong response. Just reducing scope one and two emissions is not enough. So what we call scope one and two and three, the difference is if, for example, I'm a bank and I reduce the emission of my uh, of the building of my headquarters, I'm reducing my scope one emission. These are the emissions that are under my control, the emissions that are within the boundary of my organization. But if as a bank I request my client to conduct climate action and reduce their emission, then I'm reducing scope three emission. So I'm using my power of influence to make others reduce their emission. So this type of framework also, so far we did not have a system, a framework that allowed to measure such type of contribution. If I'm a financial, let's say an investor, and I request my investing organization, the company I present, to reduce their emission, and I use engagement, whatever influence I have, to make them reduce their emission. This type of contribution, we do not have currently a system that allows to measure that. Uh, this is because there are causality problems between the action and the impact. Because the one who made the action and where it is made, this is not where the initial action, the impact actually is happening. So it, it raised a lot of challenge that hopefully distributed electric technology will help uh, address. So once we have decided and said, okay, let's promote scope three type of climate contribution where an organization is requested to use influence and make another organization conduct uh, climate action. Um, but when we, once we have decided that we wanted to run that, we come to the conclusion that if we are asking others to do it, because we are, we are asking now financial, bank, uh, customer to conduct Scope three climate contribution influencing others to reduce emission. He said, "We as a UN, we are also customer. Uh, we are uh, also some extent finance because uh, we have also pension fund. Why don't we start by walking the talk and apply this thing to us? So we took the greening the group project and we broadened the scope, saying now." We want to be an organization not only to reduce the emission of their building, the emission of their property, but we want them also to use green protocol. When they are buying something, they need to ensure that the, 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 the seller is uh, producing private contribution. When we are shipping something, we want to be sure that the shipper, at least for the good that we are shipping, will use biofuel. When we are buying energy, we would like to be sure that the electricity that we are buying is coming from the renewable energy plant. And now all these things that were not possible to track and establish with the new disruptive technology, it is possible. So the first project is this Greening the Blue project, where we will add this dimension of scope three climate contributions. And we would like to do the TNT to help us address uh, the challenge that we are facing. The second issue that on which we are working, and here we have a, a consortium of different organizations. Um, this is the use of TNT and smart contracts in forest and wood value chain for climate impact based compensation mechanism in the sustainable wood based construction sector. Here also the approach is completely new, completely different from what we know currently. The framework under the UNFCCC is able to incentivize a producer, one single producer. I'm an electricity company. I install a wind farm 
this is possible to measure the impact of my climate action and incentivize my action. But now if you take a supply chain that starts from the forest owner down to the consumer of the wood that is building it for construction, trying to identify the contribution of the different um, people that are in the, in the chain and incentivize their action is much more complex. Because you can have a situation where, for example, um, one specific um, um, part of the chain is emitting a lot of emission, but is producing goods that allow to reduce emission at the next step. So if you take a circularity economy approach, that productive impact uh, downward the level of emission. So it means that you have to have a holistic analysis of the chain and then look at the contribution of each part of the chain and put in place an incentive system that allows all the different actors to do what they have to do for the level of emission to be minimal. So this is what we are trying to do um, here. And then the, the third one is a project related to the financial sector. This is really focusing on uh, um, how do we build the financial sector, how do we measure the contribution of uh, asset or portfolio, financial asset or portfolio owner, um, when they are um, doing corporate engagement. If uh, an investor that is owner of uh, company engage with the company and try to make them reduce their emission, how do we measure the impact? How do we attribute? Now here the challenge also is when corporate reduce their emission, generally there is a lot of possible factors. It could be that R&D, uh, research and development was done, and then the cost of the technology go down, and this is what motivated uh, this is what motivated the action. It could be that a customer make influence. It could be that the policymaker put in place a new rule and regulation. It could be also that the financial conduct action. So how do we disentangle all these different influence? and be able to attribute uh, climate contribution to all these different factors and then incentivize is also a big issue. We expect DLT will help uh, solve. So as you see, there are a lot of very important type of application that will just change completely the way you are doing things. So we have a lot of hope that this new uh, innovative technology will help reshape the way we are conducting climate action, the way we are measuring the impact of climate action, and the way we are incentivizing also climate action, particularly to be able to get down to the level of energy system, measure their contribution, and be able to incentivize them. Thank you for your attention. for sharing the insights into the UNFCCC's thinking on the various uh, dimensions of blockchain and distributed ledger technology and allied technologies. My name is Tom Bauman. I'm co-chair of the Climate Change Coalition along with Masamba. And I just need to switch over presentations quickly. Functional. And so it was about uh, 18 months ago, I started two blockchain projects. One was a report for the World Bank on blockchain and related digital innovations for climate markets. And a couple of my colleagues were co-authors, I can see in the room from Expansive. Um, and another project with the Blockchain Research Institute that Don Tapscott and about 70 other researchers in all different sectors come together. So agriculture, retail, 
stock markets, finance, you name it, uh, looking at the various applications of blockchain, which are almost countless. And so in the case of the World Bank um, and climate markets, going beyond carbon credits and um, emissions trading, looking at ITMOs and all of the new climate governance innovation uh, that's emerging under the Paris Agreement, and particularly at the uh, non-state actor or non-party stakeholder level, and seeing that, that complexity start to emerge and what kind of solutions are going to be able to help us do the uh, implementation of the Paris Agreement more cost-effectively, to be able to scale it, be able to mobilize uh, the finance. And so part of the World Bank report was not only to outline the uh, emerging digital technology architecture and how that could be applied to not just carbon markets, but other existing markets, commodity markets, capital markets, and so on. Uh, but how do you actually operationalize such a new way of looking at how this technology could innovate carbon markets? One of the recommendations was establish essentially an industry association or uh, a global entity to bring together all of the stakeholders that are going to be participating in creating new governance frameworks to support how this technology is implemented into uh, current policies. In my work with the Blockchain Research Institute, <coughs> did a, a large landscape market research report on the various types of initiatives and existing organizations. Had they done an ICO, initial coin offering, or a token sale, how were they financing themselves? Did they have a white paper? Uh, did they have uh, uh, an ecosystem of partners? Which technology were they using? IBM and Hyperledger? Or were they using Consensus and Ethereum? And so on. How, did, how was that shaping up? What kind of applications, not just in climate, but in sustainability, broadly speaking? And you can see it was just a kaleidoscope of, of initiatives, which is great. Innovation, experimentation, uh, move quickly, bail opt, and let's try and get uh, uh, some innovations to market. But we know it's not so simple. And so uh, at the end of the last uh, UN Climate Conference, COP23, uh, I had just done a, a blockchain event, and um, I had a chance to meet with Musamba and Musamba said, comes up with the idea of the coalition of Paris Agreement. We had our founding meeting. We had 12 organizations. We put together a charter of shared values and principles where, I'll go into that in a little bit of detail, uh, we would start to uh, coalesce and uh, define what this new organization could do together. And this is our second meeting. And so I'll, I'll be giving a bit of a progress update. Uh, who are we? What are we doing? And after. Uh, my presentation would be happy to hand it over to various uh, members of the coalition to present on what they're actually doing uh, in their own work and with the coalition. So our mission is to, as the coalition, is to support the collaboration of the members and their stakeholders uh, so that they can advance blockchain and the related digital technologies in uh, helping to attract and mobilize the, the trillions of dollars of climate finance that will be necessary uh, to implement the climate actions and achieve the Paris Agreement. So we're very much aligned with trying to achieve the Paris Agreement. But we're so much more than simply the Paris Agreement as a grassroots, looking at task force for climate-related financial disclosure and all of the changes that are happening in the financial sector as an example. And so very quickly here, I know we started quite late, so I apologize, but I'm going to try and move quickly so that you can hear from the various uh, coalition members, which I hope will help stimulate some of the networking that follows all of the presentations, hopefully pretty soon. So just touch on a few of them. We're technology neutral. Um, we are trying to put in place safeguards that will prevent or mitigate fraud from happening. I think most of us realize that blockchain and Bitcoin came from a bit of a a shady genesis or was used by shady sectors and so some people are already a little bit tainted by that history and so we want to uh, provide some confidence to stakeholders that in fact there is a broad global initiative uh, that's coming together that wants to head, uh, hit head on that issue to ensure that there are the credibility and safeguards being developed for blockchain applications that are coming to market. And although we're focused on climate, we very much want to be 
synergistic with SDGs more broadly speaking. It's not our, our, our focus going beyond climate, but we do realize that that's a, a potential starting point for others that are working in uh, the sustainability space. And so within the coalition, which is this huge, uh, hugely diverse uh, group of uh, organizations, we have a lot of startups, you know, they've got a lot of funds, they've got some short-term priorities, uh, we have others that are universities, research institutes, governments, uh, nonprofits, and others who move at a different pace, not to mention the UN, uh, and that have a different set of objectives. But we know that as the coalition, it makes sense to start now in the long process of putting in place the, the shared uh, infrastructure uh, that would support the various uh, applications and initiatives uh, rolling out. And because that's very human-centric and it moves slower than technology innovation in small groups, now is a good time to get started so that it'll be ready when the technology matures in a, in a few years. So it's a challenge to uh, balance those two things, but that's um, what we're aiming to accomplish within the coalition. Our activities, so we do, like now, events, networking, facilitating partnering amongst uh, the various members and outside, um, supporting knowledge research. In fact, um, World Bank is now engaging uh, this week, the coalition, on a new knowledge piece, and I can see some authors in the audience who will be working on that. Uh, but then also to support members in uh, defining and performing pilot projects, in these cases, which help uh, demonstrate with the concept of the technology in a variety of sectors, and then again, uh, working on uh, taxonomies and standards and frameworks that will be uh, a shared uh, resource across the different applications, which at some point, as I'm sure you can imagine, when you apply blockchain to supply chains, or emissions trading, or MRB of climate finance, and so on, all of these applications need to be interoperable, play nice together. And so that's where, as uh, a coalition of different entities, we can define that successfully together. So, we're nine months old. This is our second meeting. Our first uh, real meeting, other than the founding one, was at the Innovate for Climate Conference hosted by the World Bank back in May, uh, which is about 100 days ago. And so we're adding members, three or four members a week. Uh, today we added another three or four members at least, and I think this week we'll add quite a few more, which is not a surprise given the, the outreach and profile that we've been uh, doing and just the opportunity of the summit that it brings, bringing everybody together. Mm -hmm. Membership activity in terms of knowledge sharing and connecting, uh, we see that that's rapidly uh, growing as well, which is great. We're starting to see take off of uh, the, um, the organization and how members are getting real uh, outputs from joining up. Uh, our first sponsor, the Royal Bank of Canada, as Martin had uh, acknowledged during the beginning of this event. Um, and and the last point there that I think is very important, which was this office presentation related to how we want to see, and the coalition uh, represents a good, uh, I don't want to say first move, but an early move that can uh, be beneficial to other initiatives within the UN system. So, uh, because we have such diverse membership, and because climate actions are also equally diverse, Members are self-organizing themselves according to their priorities, whether that's capacity building or research, or if it's issue specific like mitigation, adaptation, finance, or whether that's regional. And so you'll hear from some members uh, in the audience that are here who recently formed a team in Latin America, which is cross-cutting. They have several countries that are involved, so it's great that the coalition is uh, a means with which to help them achieve those goals. Uh, and then there's other ones here as well. And so each of these teams, what they're aiming to do together varies very uh, differently across the different teams and the uh, members that are participating. But in essence, they're scoping out what are the priorities, their ground truth thing across the diverse number of um, members. What are those priorities? How do they get there? So that when we do, uh, as we are here this week, uh, do outreach, and uh, resource mobilization, whether that's financial or otherwise, uh, those stakeholders understand our mapping exercise or planning exercise so that they can um, interact with the coalition members more directly and uh, direct, uh, more directly and quickly. 
So last slide, what's the outlook for the coalition? Uh, I mentioned uh, when I did uh, a report for the Blockchain Research Institute about 18 months ago, there might have been around 40 or 50 organizations and initiatives. Some of them were alliances and networks for sustainability or climate. By the end of uh, 2017, there was probably 100 or so. I saw a recent report that in January of this year, it was just over 100. And now it's already around 200 uh, organizations that and initiatives that are uh, working on blockchain, climate, and sustainability. Uh, the coalition, I think, just passed 125, 30 organizations, so it's really become well known across all of those initiatives, which is great. But we're going to see hundreds more, particularly next year as we see uh, progress made, whether that's uh, more proofs of concept or um, demonstrating benefits that the technology can bring. But there is clearly, by the number of organizations joining the, the coalition, an interest to work together on the common issues that they can't, any uh, initiative on its own can't do uh, effectively uh, or you know, perhaps legitimately. So uh, it's, it's good to see that the coalition is actually making as quick a progress as it is, even though we're nine months old, this is our second meeting, so I, I think over the next 100 days to the end of 2019, we're hoping to achieve some of our resource uh, targets uh, financially in order to grow the, the coalition so that I can do more of these events and also support the uh, priorities and activities that the members are going to be identifying uh, and that need resources as well. And so, uh, it's an open, Global initiative. Uh, intentionally, there's no membership fee because we want to encourage large and small to uh, interact from all different sectors. And so you're welcome to uh, to go to our website. We've got our resources. It's pretty quick and easy. If you'd like to join, we've got a variety of, uh, of tools that we use to help get people uh, interacting quickly. Thank you very much. With that, I'd like to uh, invite up Marion Girls from uh, the Gold Standard Foundation. Thank you, Tom, and thanks for taking such a leadership role and um, putting us together and um, leading the coalition forward. It's, um, it's a lot of work, so thanks for doing it. Um, hi, everyone. Apologies if you saw my presentation earlier this afternoon. I tried to do it a little bit differently so that if you already saw it, it will feel like it's different. And if you haven't seen it uh, already, hopefully it will, be, um, it will be helpful. So my name is Marion Vell, I'm the CEO of the Gold Standard Foundation. We're a standard and certification body um, creating, created over 15 years ago by a, a number of civil society organizations, including WWF, uh, to bring uh, more credibility and transparency to the carbon markets. Uh, since then, we've evolved a little bit our, our model and we're focusing really on the credible quantification of impacts across a range of interventions. So carbon, carbon markets and, and climate finance remains um, a very important area of work, but um, we're now able to quantify and certify impacts across the 17 um, SDGs and we, we released last year our, our new standard goal standard for the global goals that um, uh, make this possible. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the work we're doing on, on DLT and, uh, and why this is um, an, an important topic for us. So we've joined uh, uh, the Climate Ledger Initiative uh, about two years ago, which was initially founded by Nick Beglinger from CleanTech21. Uh, Nick is the, the hackathon person, so he, um, he organized the first um, uh, climate hackathon at the, at the last COP in Bonn. Um, the Climate Ledger Initiative is uh, supported by Climate Kick, and you'll hear from Climate Kick after my, my presentation. It's a, it's a public-private uh, uh, initiative that seeks to bridge the gap between the climate and the DLT communities by providing research, uh, use cases, and awareness-raising activities that will help the two communities get together, understand each other, and also help advance the objectives of the Paris Agreement. Our primary target audience really are policy makers, so we're talking a lot with um, the climate negotiators, the people that do the COP every year, that are negotiating in the rooms every year and try, trying to make them understand the potential that the technology can offer uh, to accelerate uh, the implementation of the Paris Agreement. 
So one of our key sort of output that we're working on right now and which will become a flagship report is the Navigating Blockchain for Climate Action report. Uh, it's a three-part report that really looks at the, uh, the nexus of climate and DLT and, uh, and, uh, and seeks to provide recommendations and guidance for policymakers. So the first part is really on the Paris Agreement itself. So if you're not a climate negotiation nerd, uh, it's not going to be a, too um, uh, uh, um, sort of uh, specific to you, but the, the negotiations are super specific. We're talking about uh, um, over 20 articles, uh, quite a number of uh, requirements for parties, and the Paris Agreement is specific in the sense that it's a bottom-up agreement. So parties committed not to a certain target, they committed to their own target and then to a transparency process and a, and a, and a, and a, and a process whereby ambition would be raised over time. And so DLT can help that, can help bring the transparency, can help bring MRV costs down, and can help uh, create trust in the system uh, while making it more uh, reliable. The second part would really be on um, climate action outside the Paris Agreement, so everything that can be done by citizens, and Masala was talking about the potential that DLT can, um, can have in uh, unlocking climate action at, at sort of people's level. So we're looking at that, especially context of pride crowdfunding, uh, distributed energy systems, and also corporate um, climate and, and sustainability targets. So how can DLT be a force um, uh, to drive more ambitions um, at corporate level, but also help finance and spread uh, energy systems? And the last part is really what we're calling good blockchain, what is good, what are good practices and what should become a, a, a new sort of industry benchmark for, for developing the systems. That report is, a, is an active collaboration with the um, climate, change, climate Change Coalition. Quite a number of um, chapters in the report are authored by people that are coalition members. The uh, report is going to be reviewed uh, by a number of um, coalition members. So it's really a collective effort, and um, I'm really grateful to uh, everyone um, uh, that has contributed to it and, um, and, and helped us uh, put it together. We release it at COP. And at the same time, with Climate Kicks report and, uh, and, um, 
uh, expertise, we organize a workshop at COP to start disseminating some of the key findings and stimulate discussions within the Climate Change Coalition Network, the Climate Kick Network on how to, um, to move forward from here. So that's a brief overview on, on one of the, the flagship sort of um, uh, piece of work that we're working on. The other uh, piece of work that I wanted to share with you is the work that Gold Standard is doing on digitizing MRV. And uh, for us, it's a very important piece of work because we believe that technology offers huge opportunities. I mean, we can make the real-time traceability of goods a reality. We can paint the sustainability profile of an agricultural commodity. We can do huge sort of new things with DLT, Internet of Things, and, and all those new technologies, but it also comes with challenges. And, and the three challenges that we have identified are really how can you trust the data that's coming in, how can you trust the data that's coming out, and how can you trust the system between the data that's coming in and the data that's coming out. And that's where standards can really play an important role. And um, if we believe that, that the technology is not going to make us irrelevant, we think that we need to fundamentally change the way we operate to fully uh, uh, deliver the, the value that, that we can deliver. And, and that, that means changing the way we act and, and work as a standards body. And, and a key piece of work that we're focusing our efforts on is what we're calling our digitizing MRV program. And we really want to move from a, a linear, paper-based process where we check that the data that's coming in is compliant with our requirements, that the processes to transform that data are in line with our requirements, and that the output is in line with our requirements. So it's a very linear, sort of paper-based, human-intensive process to a digital, real-time uh, process that would be really cost-efficient and add a lot of value. So we're looking at sort of Internet of Things to capture data and give us a sense of the quality of that data. We're looking at um, coding uh, methodologies to automate the transformation process. We're looking at artificial intelligence to identify where outliers would be and where we would need to send actually someone to the field to verify that that farm is really in compliance. So rather than do it for every farm every year, we could do it for one farm out of hundreds or thousands of farms because that one is an outlier. So we could make the human intervention much more efficient and targeted and therefore reduce cost. And the output would be compatible with what our users want. And that could be an output that's compatible with the corporate greenhouse gas reporting protocol that a corporate wants to use. It could be an output that's compliant with the CDM carbon credit market, with sort of clear uh, rules on additionality. It could be an output that can be used by airlines under the airlines of trading schemes, meaning no double counting and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, we think that technology can really make our work um, uh, uh, more cost effective, but that it can also help us to take our credible sort of MRV process to scale. Obviously without scaling the cost, but only scaling the, the value equipment. One of the first um, pilot that our partners, South Pole and Ixo, have put forward and, and on which we're, we're working with them is a renewable energy project. So we're going to basically do what I've just outlined uh, uh, in real life and take the normal certification process that's analog to a digital process um, and uh, ideally a real-time process. So instead of issuing our credits once a year, it could be done literally every minute. Each time a megawatt hour is produced by the solar PV plant, a carbon credit could be issued. Uh, and transaction costs would be um, a, a fraction of, of what they are right now. So that's the sort of the future we see. And, um, and um, we'll be working with uh, uh, all the CCC members that are interested in, uh, in developing those uh, practical hands on sort of um, next generation MRV cases with us. And I know that Tom is. Uh, He's a big supporter uh, uh, of the ID and, uh, and one of the pioneers behind um, the di digital MRV uh, concept. So we're super excited of being a, a CCC member and we look forward to working with uh, uh, all, all of those um, members in the future on those issues. Thanks.
wish we had more time or that everybody would have arrived on time so that we could have had more time for questions for, for Mary and others. I know you have to run. Yeah, but still has my details if you want to get in Thanks again. Uh, I'd like to invite up to the stage now uh, Neil Walmsley of uh, Climate Kick. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so I'm Neil Walmsley. I'm uh, the International Programs and uh, Business Development Manager for uh, Climate Kick. Um, so um, thanks very much to Marion for actually describing our work in this field far better than I could because I'm not a, a distributed ledger technology expert whatsoever, so um, uh, my apologies. So I will focus on a much higher level um, and talk about what Climate Kick is and what our ambitions are in this field. Uh, and I'll also be very quick because I know there's a lot waiting for us. So uh, and that's the privilege of being the final speaker. So Climate Kick uh, is an organization that is focusing on building a climate innovation economy. Uh, we were set up about seven, eight years ago uh, following the global financial crisis when it became apparent that Europe was not the most uh, dynamic or innovative of places for growing new businesses, not just in the field of climate change, but in many others as well. And we actually looked to Silicon Valley as uh, the place where innovation was happening. And so the question was asked, how can we actually um, create that in Europe? And so Climate Kick was set up along with several rules to try and emulate uh, the approaches and the thinking and successes that were taking place over here. Uh, so I do feel a little bit like a uh, tea salesman going to China at the moment. So um, yeah, I still have a lot to learn about myself. Um, but what we do is we work on behalf of the European Union to uh, help build up communities of innovators across a number of different fields. And um, we've been focusing very much on trying to speed up the rate of innovation taking place in Europe to meet um, the, um, uh, the need to decarbonize at a much faster rate than uh, Europe is currently doing. What we've been uh, focusing on, oh, I absolutely hate this uh, diagram because it's far too complicated. Uh, but what we try and focus on is bringing together uh, all the different actors in the innovation ecosystem. So that includes businesses, includes research organizations, cities, uh, and also the community and most others. And we basically bring them together, uh, hundreds of partners across Europe on an ongoing basis to develop new thinking, new projects, new ideas, and uh, technologies. Uh, focusing on key challenges uh, where we can have the most impact and where there is very strong opportunity to uh, develop the economy. Oh, that hasn't come across properly. Uh, but this gives you an idea of uh, the sort of scale of uh, the work that we've been doing, um, the amount of uh, partners that we work with, are over 300. Uh, we've leveraged about 2.5 uh, 2 billion in climate investment from these businesses, uh, and quite over 1,000 uh, innovative startups. Uh, we also run quite a large education program working with universities and, uh, and other institutions across Europe to uh, build up the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs in the climate space. Uh, this is a, an example of some of the uh, different partners we work with. Uh, this slide is actually out of date. We've got about 50 to 60 more partners since the slide was produced. So, uh, um, just get started. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, now that we've just opened our first office in San Francisco, um, it's going to grow even larger. Uh, but as you can see, it's a, it's a real mix of large and small organizations across many different fields. And what we do is we bring them together on a regular basis to look at what the key challenges are in different fields, different areas, and work with them to develop um, whole new ideas, innovative new approaches, uh, develop whole new uh, business areas, and, and help support them to grow. So this is our um, current geographical spread. Uh, we are a European Union organization. Uh, we're funded by them. Uh, we get about 80 million a year to uh, support innovation. Um, uh, the blue, the countries in dark blue are our core countries. Um, but we also start to support uh, more Eastern European and Asian uh, countries as well through um, our regional innovation scheme. And the blockchain and distributed ledger technologies really start to take off there as a, as a strong appealing market. So we're working with them. Um, partners in Romania, Serbia, um, uh, Belarus, and Latvia, and many other places to, to help them develop their uh, thinking in this space and their comparative advantage. 
Um, I won't really spend much time on this, but as you can see, we've got these are our four main areas of focus: so sustainable cities, sustainable land use, production systems, and decision metrics and finance. And I think I might just skip over these in the interest of time. Um, but this is our impact goals, where we uh, focus our resources. And what we focus on as an organisation is end-to-end -end innovation. So we will start, we will support businesses and ideas right from the very earliest stages of concept in the mind of a student or a young professional through the different stages of growth, developing and uh, growing a commercialised business, um, scaling up through large venture capital investments um, and uh, taking out to the marketplace. So working with national governments, cities to actually deploy these um, uh, technologies and solutions at scale. Um, and these are just a couple of examples of some of our uh, uh, more successful startups. Uh, this is actually an electric jet um, uh, technology. Um, I kind of wish we'd taken a larger stake in that. We gave them a grant of 100,000 euros and they've secured 87 million in investments. Um, and we gave it as a grant rather than equity, so um, that was a bit foolish for sake on our part. Uh, but that's one of our more visually appealing examples. We support these sorts of technologies, everything from uh, electric vehicles through to distributed ledger technology uh, to uh, things like, oh, i trying to think, uh, so edible water bottles um, is a, a whole new area for us. Um, insects is basically food, uh, food for cattle uh, produced by insects rather than, um, well, the, the natural and not very pleasant way in which uh, animals are often fed in the food supply system. Um, and actually, the winner of the UK venture competition last year, um, the national competition, was a packaging company that uh, insulates boxes from chicken feathers recycled from farms. And that says quite a lot about the UK as well. Um, so, yes, that was my quick presentation on who we are. Um, blockchain and distributed ledger technology is an exciting new area for us. Uh, we have been supporting um, many new ideas and startups developing their solutions in this space. And what we're starting to do is develop a whole new program area which is going to continue to grow this, uh, draw an investment from our uh, public and private sector partners uh, and develop a strategy working with the Climate Chain Coalition, the Gold Standards uh, Foundation and many others to really build this up and uh, have global impacts at scale. Um, I will stop there because I'm going to uh, get out of my depth quite quickly. Um, but if you want to ask me anything about um, uh, climate kick, I'll be around for the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Neil. I'm a big fan of climate kick and near the near future. So uh, we reached 7:30, and the next part of the agenda is that we welcome up uh, several of the uh, climate change coalition members to give a two or three minute brief description of what they're doing so that the rest of the room understands uh, some of the work that's happening and hopefully that will stimulate some conversation over some stimulating beverages. So, uh, I, yes, it's that <laughs> coalition member. Yeah, uh, Stephen. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Sure. Um, so uh, thanks for having me here, and I've been a member for about five months now, uh, and like everything that I've heard so far. Uh, what I'm working on is a, it's called the Natural Capital Alliance, uh, and Natural Capital is a principle that puts uh, value metrics on living ecosystems. Uh, it's been a study by, by about 25 years by the World Bank and the UN and many universities, and we're looking to put that on the blockchain. So. For instance, with, uh, with our platform and our kind of projects and protocols, uh, we'll be able to plant trees, uh, proof, uh, that proof of action or proof of karma that you planted a tree. Uh, then every year that that tree is in the ground producing oxygen, sequestering carbon, creating biodiversity, purifying water, we'll be able to actually exchange that value from the planters and the contributors to planting the trees. Um, and we have the scientists that are, have been working on this for 20 years on the team. We have, uh, Catherine Foster um, reached out to us to uh, potentially run the Natural Cap Alliance within the division of uh, the Climate Change Coalition, which sounds uh, right up our alley. Um, and we have kind of a global group working on it that's been um, working on these studies. We're looking to launch our first project um, in uh, Madagascar uh, around mangrove trees. Uh, mangrove trees will be one of the first projects we, we tackle. Uh, the, the scientists have been doing the studies for 20 years, they've planted 5 million trees to 
uh, really hone in on, uh, on the ecosystem service standards. Uh, we'll be using drone technology and RFIDs and biochips and satellites and a peer-to-peer -peer rating system. Uh, we also have gamification, uh, which end up gaming idea, so you can play a game about learning about planting a forest in the same city. Uh, and by playing the game, all the ad money, all the, the rewards, all the data would actually go towards planting trees, which would kickstart your wallet for regenerative assets. Uh, we're, we're looking at an impact exchange, similar to like Binance, uh, but only for like impact uh, SDG, proje uh, SDG projects. And um, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of what uh, we're, we've been doing. And uh, we'll be at the UN General Assembly uh, presenting these ideas. And also on Thursday and Friday, there's two different, uh, it's about four hours each day around the Nash Capital County Principles uh, with the IXO Foundation. So um, that's me, uh, and uh, thank you. Right on. because we saw the need of the regulators in Latin America to know this technology. So uh, we've been uh, having audiences with the, the Mexican energy regulator, with the state utility, uh, to tell the benefits of, of, of blockchain and explore the use cases uh, regarding uh, the green attributes, traceability. Uh, we have a, an auction market in, in Mexico, so uh, there's a lot of competition. Also, um, there's a regulation coming in, in Mexico that is going to be a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, enabler for, uh, for distributed solar PV. So we're working uh, very close uh, with the Mexican authorities to, to, to push this agenda. Uh, if you're related to, to the Latin American market, please uh, come and talk to me. Uh, we're trying to put a forum, a regional forum of Latin America, blockchain, sustainable uh, and energy businesses or uh, organizations. Hopefully we can put it uh, by the end of the next year. And um, basically, that's it. Thank you very much. Could I invite someone to Nori to come up next? I'm just picking random as soon as I recognize them. Hi, my name is Paul Gamble. I'm the CEO, one of the co founders of Nori, and we're building the market infrastructure make it possible to reverse climate change uh, by making it as simple as possible to pay for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We've been working on this for a little over a year. We have a team of about 10 people now. Uh, we are uh, working on developing our first methodology for the carbon counting of uh, removal. We're focused on soil carbon removal initially, uh, so regenerative agriculture. Uh, we're putting together a um, peer review committee to help us uh, help uh, solicit feedback from the scientific community about measuring that uh, carbon <coughs> removal. The way that our market works is uh, we are creating and issuing what are called carbon removal certificates, each one representing a metric ton removed. Uh, and then we're creating our Nori token, where one token purchases one certificate. We're separating out these two different uh, digital assets so that uh, whatever the free-floating price of the Nori token is in the exchange markets 
can finally represent a truly market-driven price on carbon dioxide. Uh, so we're trying to really create that pricing signal. Uh, going forward, uh, we are uh, still uh, implementing our soil carbon methodology. We're beginning a pilot project very soon with a number of different farmers and uh, ranchers, uh, in, primarily in the United States initially. And we're looking to launch this marketplace uh, in the beginning of next year. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Joseph Allen, the Vice President of the Blockchain Climate Foundation. Thanks, Tom. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joseph Palance, uh, and I'm here with the Blockchain for Climate Foundation. When I fell down the crypto rabbit hole, I realized that the killer app for blockchain vis a vis climate is going all the way to the top and connecting national accounts. Uh, under the Paris Agreement, um, and putting that on the blockchain. I couldn't figure out how to do it for about the first year that I was engaged in this space, um, because we needed to have something where we could have billions of tons of carbon emission reductions and um, mitigation outcomes, and be able to ball those all into um, something totally fungible, and then something totally distinct and discrete in each one, and so um, we figured it out, this is the short version, is that we figured it out um, how to do this on the Ethereum blockchain with ERC-998, um, which is the crypto composables um, uh, tool on the Ethereum blockchain where you can have uh, a non-fungible token uh, hold and own other fungible and non-fungible tokens. Um, happy to chat and give some more detail on this. Um, later, uh, but Matt Lockyer, who uh, proposed the standard, uh, is a part of our team in Vancouver. Um, and so now we're working on building out the tech, building engagement with the national parties, um, because it fundamentally is federal governments that have sovereignty over their carbon impacts and over their commitments to the UNFCCC under the Paris Agreement. So working with them to help us build the user interface and user experience, and then also working to build out our funding reality uh, and just make sure that we can fund this in an appropriate way to develop what needs to get done. Um, great to hear about all of your work. I look forward to connecting later. Thank you very much. Um, I'll, sorry to interrupt. I was. Um, also, a uh, team lead on the mitigation task team. Um, so, if any of you folks here are on that team or interested in engaging on that uh, as part of Climate Change Coalition, we would love to speak with you as well. Thank you. Joseph, and if I could invite Juan from uh, ESA in Colombia, who leads the Coalition's Latin America team. Thank you, Juan. I am Juan. Uh, I come from Colombia. I am representing ESA. ESA is a company uh, like transporting energy utility. It's the biggest one in Colombia, uh, unique, uh, Colombia and the biggest one in Latin America. We have uh, 32 companies in world Latin America, Chile, Peru, Brazil, and other countries like Bolivia, Uruguay. Um, maybe it's a little bit uh, fun for I joined the company. Uh, I am now a corporative member. I am developer of blockchain. Uh, the last year I was studying in Germany, uh, developing a blockchain for my final project, my degree. And then I was, like in Colombia, uh, looking to start a startup. And the company uh, received like, news that I was working in that. They were interested in me. And so they hired me to develop uh, so blockchain like a uh, risk and then started to understand that blockchain is an opportunity. Uh, you don't have to fight against blockchain, you can take uh, blockchain like a tool, you can take blockchain to improve your process. And so we started to understand how blockchain can help this company. Then the strategy of the company in World Latin America is not only focused in energy. We have another companies like uh, we have the highways in Chile. Uh, we have a program that is connection, have one connection 
uh, something to connect it to South Pole. Uh, when we have a credit carbon, uh, carbon credits, uh, then the strategy is beginning to be more concentrate that sustainability is not just like something additional to the business, is sustainability is a business. And blockchain is something that can create a something bigger in this in this field because bring transparency, brings a democracy and now we are trying to to develop 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 in Colombia the world register for the emission of carbon and we are trying because we are focusing to do uh, the market, the ETAs, for Colombia, based in blockchain, bringing the potential of blockchain to this, and looking forward, uh, we want to expand this in Latin America. I believe I'd seen Amy Seidman. Amy, if you able to come on up and give a brief uh, overview of the flow and the profits. Sure, we see the good graphics. Yeah, that's what I'm Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Cheers. Cheers. So, um, my name is Amy Seidman. I'm the founder of Eco. And our work is to help facilitate the reporting and validation of sustainability claims to create transparency and accountability around sustainable business and investment. And uh, I'm really glad to be here and to be a member of the Climate Change Coalition uh, and to be collaborating with so many amazing people. Um, and uh, what we are also doing is creating a third party validator network that will help facilitate the truth around this by engaging others aside from us to, uh, to do those, uh, those validation of the claims, the experts and um, the auditors and the certifiers. And it's really about creating a system and a tool set to make things easier uh, and to help facilitate the access to this information. Um, so I could go on, but if anybody wants any questions or asks me anything, you can do that. I understand I should do it in three minutes, so there you go. I have a question. Why are you so happy? I'm happy because I'm done with the day. No, in general. <laughs> <laughs> in general, well, I'm first of all, I'm following my passion. Uh, and, and thank you for seeing that. I'm not always so thrilled, but um, I think that we all have an opportunity to participate. And, and for me, the work that I'm doing is my life's work. And regardless of the support that we have uh, externally, in tangible forms, I'm surrounded by brilliant people. I have an amazing team, and the people that I meet every day are, are incredibly inspiring. Um, so today was a great day. I'm really happy because I got to meet. And collaborate and begin alliances with many of the groups here. And I think that that's the solution that we need. I think we each need to connect the dots on the projects that we're working on so that we can strengthen each other. So, thank you. We had a really good afternoon session. Um, and uh, to Amy's point, there was, I had a hard, hard time clicking the back in the coffee break. Uh, and we're going to try and finish, we couldn't finish on time. But in that spirit, I'll be quiet and invite the next speaker, Rosario from Switzerland, to uh, present on this organization's work we're watching. Thank you, Tom. Good evening. My name is Rosario Piazzese. Uh, I'm the CEO of the Consulting Development Strategies. Is a management consulting firm based in uh, Zurich and Zug, and uh, recently we opened an office also in uh, Washington DC. Uh, we are focused uh, on mainly on all the topics related with the digital innovation, especially in the financial sector. Uh, and we developed uh, uh, a specialized line of business, and um, we are trying to propose to support also the climate change coalition, uh, focused on uh, two main dominions. The first is a methodological one, uh, focused on uh, the model of governance of 
blockchain and DLT topics, and uh, especially on creating a, a really well specialized taxonomy about blockchain and DLT and the logical governance of the two different models. And the second one is uh, a more IT focused area specialized on uh, supply chain with a, a really well focused platform on a high valuable asset management on uh, logistics and supply chain. And, uh, and a second one based on the Ethereum platform uh, focused on a pilot at the moment for supporting processes in the financial sector. I don't want to waste much of your time <laughs> for any question. Thomas, my take. <laughs> we have time for another one or two uh, coalition members that I might not be picking out of the crowd. If you'd like to come up and give a brief overview of what you're doing for everyone who's here in the interest of having some networking conversation over some drinks. And seeing that uh, there's passes, I'll invite our last series of speakers up. Uh, shall I hand the microphone to you, Miroslav? Yes, please. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello. Ari, please join me on stage. <laughs> it's the winning team that's uh, going to present to you now. So uh, we are from the International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges and we are building the mighty stakeholder partnership Glotcha. And it's uh, about uh, uh, really organizing uh, mighty stakeholder climate action and uh, also helping to organize the global climate uh, governance uh, system that uh, this kind of action will be more coherent and we are trying to support the work of the Climate Change Coalition. We've had today in the afternoon already the presentation of our vision uh, which uh, is uh, to get really everybody engaged as also Masamba said this is one of the aims of uh, this new era of climate action to have non-state actors engaged and we have there two uh, flagship initiatives one is uh, to really mobilize based on blockchain technology the resources for a global climate action center and on the other hand also uh, developing apps that will bring a global climate action agenda and uh, incentivization mechanisms, gamification of climate action on the mobile devices of everybody. And we are delighted to have uh, with us Unify Earth uh, as uh, a technology partner. Uh, and uh, for information also, uh, a special area of our cooperation with the Climate Change Coalition is resource mobilization for blockchain technology infrastructure for non-state climate action. We have uh, 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 Give Youth a Chance climate philanthropy meeting on Friday this week uh, at the aquarium uh, of the Bay. And Unify Earth is our uh, sponsor there and uh, also helping us to connect with the philanthropic community of the Bay Area and beyond. And we will really try to help uh, connect these wonderful projects of uh, Climate Change Coalition members with the wealth of the, of the world and really making the connection between these high impact uh, investment opportunities and the wealth out there. And in terms of uh, getting a global climate action agenda on the mobile devices of everybody, I would like to inform you also about the concert that we, uh, is going to take place on Thursday in two days in the evening at Grace Cathedral. It's also an affiliate event, also uh, sponsored with, uh, by Unify Earth. And uh, you can have uh, here some postcards with the details. Christina Stevens, our uh, media expert, uh, was so kind to bring them. Uh, they are fresh from the printing machine. And uh, I give the word to Ari, our Glotcher Foundation president and uh, partner of Unify Earth. To Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for being here. I want to really thank Samba, Tom, Miro, all the leaders here of the Climate Change Coalition. 
Uh, this is such inspiring and challenging work. Uh, and really encourage you all to join and stay involved with the organization, help it grow and really allow the climate chain, blockchain uh, technology to reach its potential. Uh, I'm a civil society representative to the United Nations, activist impact investor in the blockchain space uh, since 2013, and I'm currently a PhD student in uh, political science future studies at the University of Hawaii. Uh, and just want to also really echo uh, this, give you the chance, uh, music concert for climate action concert um, at Grace Cathedral on Thursday night. We'll have taiko drums, harps, guitars, bass, uh, uh, sound meditation, gongs, incredible speakers like from the uh, Polynesian Voyaging Society that just traveled over from Hawaii without even using a compass. Uh, really incredible, inspiring speakers. It's a free event, uh, benefit concert. We would love to have you all there uh, and uh, for your communities to be invited as well. Uh, I'd like to pass it over to Arnold with, uh, with closing words representing Unify Earth, one of the most exciting blockchain uh, technologies for climate action. I have three minutes <laughs> with the intervention. Uh, I only wanted to say that it's, uh, we are work, uh, We will present at the uh, Grace Cathedral event also the next round of the Global Challenges Youth Music Contest. That's our way how we engage youth in uh, contributing to, to creating a new vision of a better world with a climate and safe future. And uh, there, one element will be blockchain-based voting on the best song. And that's one way how we will also bring to the attention of the youth the potentials of blockchain technology. Because if we would tell uh, young people, you, this is wonderful technology, high potential, you have, should uh, install it on your mobile device, they would say no. But if it's the uh, condition to get to music, because young people love music, and uh, for this uh, I think we will we will also somehow incentivize a culture of a blockchain uh, adoption among the youth, also in all, uh, all parts of the world. And here again, we are working with Unify Earth, and therefore I'm happy to hand over to Arno. Okay, so until two months ago, we were like the three bearded musketeers, and I unfortunately shaved off my very white beard <laughs> that uh, uh, was <laughs> once we got into market. If only I could just get these guys to sort of come out a little bit and be more expressive, you know, so we could understand each other. Um, I'm the communications director of Unify Earth Network. Uh, we call ourselves a blockchain 3.0. Uh, our motto is humanizing the blockchain. We really believe that so long as we unite around the 17 sustainable development goals, we figure that if 193 nations can get along on something, then that's a good thing. And so if you look at each of the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations, we really want to tackle each one of them, starting with number one, which is no poverty, and number 17, which is...